Welcome to today's session on new ideas in management. I am Professor Subhash Sharma and today we will discuss about the new thinking and new perspectives in management and leadership. Now, the natural question is why new ideas in management and leadership? In order to appreciate the reason for the new ideas in management leadership, let us take a historical look at the development of the management thought. We can identify four eras of management thinking. The first era was the scientific management era and that is the era which was deeply influenced by the disciplines of the engineering and economics. And as we all know that the Frederick Taylor was the prime figure of this era. Then it took around 50, 60 years to come to the era 2, which is the human side of management. And then the development in the field of motivation and leadership and empowerment were influenced by the field of psychology. And then by the time it was 1980s or so, the, a new era came into the existence and that was the concern for the ethics and values assumed tremendous importance and the later on that was reflected in the idea of the corporate governance. During this era, the, the field of philosophy started influencing the field of management. And then around 2000 or so, another era dawned in and that is the idea of the spirituality in management the focus shifted on the deeper understanding of the self and implications of self-management for the overall field of management. Instead of just managing others, it was concluded that managing self is equally important and there is a famous quote by Gandhiji which says, Nij parshasan, fir anushasan. That means you first rule yourself before managing and ruling others. Now, these four eras influenced the management thinking over a period of time of last almost 100 years. And now we are moving towards new ideas which are drawing upon all these four eras and creating new thought in the field of management. Now, this is also necessitated because of the you know new concerns which humanity is facing like for example the idea of wellness and the happiness the idea of the environment or the ecology has to be integrated into the management field and then the idea of inclusion the inclusive growth and the idea of human quality development the hqd so all these ideas uh, are now providing new perspectives on in the field of management. Now, in order to understand some of the new models of management and leadership, we will focus today on four important models. The first model is what we call the theory K of management and leadership. Now, this is a detailed discussion of this idea is available in my book, New Mantras in Corporate Corridors. Second is the model of human behavior or human being, which we call the OSHA model of human being. And this is available in my book, Western Windows, Eastern Doors. The third model is what we call the MBA model. And this is also available in my book, Western Windows, Eastern Doors. And the fourth model is the corporate Rishi model of leadership and management. And this is from my book, new mantras in corporate corridors. So, now we will discuss these four models in detail. The idea of theory K, organization is a kutumb, K is for kutumb and kutumb means community, it is a community of the stakeholders. There are different stakeholders like customers, employees, government, society and all these people are connected with the organization, with the corporates. And therefore, we need to understand that what is the benefit which the corporate is 
giving to all the stakeholders and therefore organization as a community as an extended family that is the key idea in the theory K. Now, how do we manage the relationships with the different stakeholders? Now, there are basically three theories or three ways of managing rel relationships which we call in the standard management literature as theory X, theory Y and theory Z or theory Z. Now, theory X is the authoritarian style of management, theory Y is the democratic style of management and theory X and theory Y were given by the American scholars and therefore, they are also known as part of the American management style. And then came the theory Z or theory Z which was given by the Japanese scholars and therefore, it is known as the Japanese management style. Theory Z is the team building. So, we have the three approaches. One is the authoritarian style of management, second is the democratic style of management involving people into decision making process and the third is the team building style of management. Now, these three styles of management are used by every manager. Now, in order to understand these three styles of management, we can do a, an exercise. I call it as a self rating on the x, y, z scale. This self rating can be done by every individual. You can reflect on your percentage of times when you end up using the x approach or the y approach or the z approach. Like for example, an individual may be x 30 percent, y 30 percent and z 40 percent. Then that becomes his portfolio of these styles x, y, z. Now, different individuals differ in these different x, y, z percentages and that is what makes them either effective or not so effective because depending upon the situation, if a situation demands you to be tough and if you do not have that x element in you, then you will not be able to take tough decisions. Similarly, if the situation demands you to be a team oriented then and if to know if in case you do not have that team orientation in your personality, then you will not be able to develop a good team or you will not be a good team member. And therefore, all the individuals use these three styles in their own ways depending upon their personality makeup. Now, theory K can be represented as a formula and that K is equal to x plus y plus z. So, that is the basic idea of the theory K that depending upon situation you use a mix of x, y or z not just x or y or z, but a kind of a mix. Uh, a little more uh, complicated way of putting it is K is equal to x raised to the power a, y raised to the power b and z raised to the power c, where a, b, c represent the intensities of x or y or z. There are some people who use x with tremendous amount of intensity. For example, a dictator, the intensity A will be very, very high. For a democrat, the intensity of B will be very, very high. And for a team builder, the intensity of C will be very, very high. Now, what we can generally recommend is that A should be less than B, less than C. That means, a manager should use x in lesser uh, intensity and y with greater intensity and z with much higher intensity. So, this is the idea of the whole concept of theory K. Now, we also call the theory K as the Indian management style because the Indian managers are always using a combination approach the x or y and z approach in a combination manner and that is one reason why they are very good managers or they are more effective in many situations which particularly require the you know the, the a kind of a fuzziness in which the single style is not successful. So, this is the first model of the new ideas. The second model is what we call the OSHA model. To understand the OSHA model, we need to understand the models of man or the models of human being. Now, whenever we think about man, normally we think of man as a 
और ह्यूमन बीइंग एज अ सोशल एनिमल और पॉलिटिकल एनिमल और इकोनॉमिक मैन एंड सिमिलरली द अदर मॉडल्स ऑफ मैन आर एग्जिस्टिंग व्हेन वी इंटीग्रेट ऑल दिस मॉडल्स ऑफ मैन एंड देन वी अराइव एट व्हाट वी कॉल द ओशा मॉडल ऑफ ह्यूमन बीइंग इन दिस मॉडल द ह्यूमन बिहेवियर इज एनालाइज एट फोर डिफरेंट लेवल्स the first the top level is the o level o represents the oneness oneness with self oneness with universe oneness with nature oneness with god or this the supreme consciousness s is representing the spiritual dimension of human existence h represents the human dimension of existence and a represents the animalistic which means the aggressive dimension which rep- which is representing the full of anger so a level behavior h level behavior s level behavior and o level behavior these are the four levels of human behavior today what we see in the world is lot of anger and aggression that is the human beings are operating from the a level so we if in case we want to ne- create a transformation in the organizations in the society and in the world we need to move from the animalistic level of behavior to the next level the humanistic and to the next level which is spiritual and then ultimately to the oneness level so this is the basic model being represented here in terms of the four dimensions of behavior the o oneness as a spiritual as humanistic and a animalistic the literature in management field on related to the human side of management was focusing at the second level now when we are talking about spirituality in management the new literature is being created at the third level about the human behavior and the human beings now when we see the interpersonal interactions between two individuals then what we find is that the person a and person b when they interact with each other they can behave at all the four levels so person a is behaving at animalistic level person b can behave at the oneness level or spiritual level humanistic level or animal animalistic level what happens in interpersonal interactions is that when animalistic animalistic that means aggression and aggression both the parties are operating at aggression level then th- this leads to a a interaction the aggression and aggression now when they both the parties are operating at the aggression level then there is lot of negative energy is created what we call nagarji nagarji is a word for negative energy when we combine the two words negative and energy we get this new word which we call nagarji the other interactions are at the hh level the humanistic humanistic level when both the people are operating at the human level and then that leads to creation of positive energy like for example two friends are meeting when they meet they create lot of positive energy when two enemies meet they create lot of negative energy so that is the hh interaction and then we move to the third level the spiritual spiritual interaction when the two people oper- interact at the spiritual spiritual level there is lot of synergy which gets created so therefore what happens is this interaction matrix the what uh, what we call the osha interaction matrix or the model is telling us the need to create a transformation from the a a level aggression aggression level to h h level the humanistic humanistic level to s s level the spiritual spiritual level and thereby creating a transformation within the organization at the workplaces from nagarji and conflicts and anger to synergy and well-being and happiness so that is this is the basic idea about this model which we call the osha model of human behavior here we come to the end of part 1 in the next part we will discuss the mba model of decision making and the corporate rishi model of leadership 
We will conclude this part by a small poem titled as Light in My Heart. There is light in my heart, it is there from the start. It's mystery you want to know. It says hello, hello. It says hello, hello. It gives me a peep into things that are deep. It has a beautiful glow. It says hello, hello. It says hello, hello. It shows silver lines bending space and time in nature's beauty show. It says hello, hello, it says hello, hello. This light is divine, it makes us fine, its flow is very slow. It says hello, hello, it says hello, hello. There is light in my heart, it is there from the start, it's mystery you want to know. It says hello, hello, it says hello, hello. So this is the song which captures the essence of the Vushra model. In the next module, we will have the MBA model and the corporate issue model. Welcome to today's session on new ideas in management. I am Professor Subhash Sharma and today we will discuss about the new thinking and new perspectives in management and leadership. So, in the previous uh, module we discussed theory K and the OSHA model. I trust you found, found it interesting. The third model which we, am, we are going to discuss is what we call the MBA model of mind management. The mind management has acquired a new dimension in the field of management because ultimately everything originates from mind and if the mind is in control and if the mind management is effective, then the personal effectiveness goes up. By MBA, we mean the man, buddhi, uh, and ahankar, man, which means the power of the heart and the power of intuition. So, that is the idea of the man. The buddhi means the power of the intellect, the rational dimension of decision making and the ahankar means the ego dimension of decision making. So, this MBA model is a model of decision making as well as a model of management. So, the, all the decisions are made in terms of these three key ideas. There are decisions which are made on the basis of the man, which means the intuition and the heart dimension becomes very important. Today, we are using the word emotional quotient. So, that is what is being reflected by the man dimension. The buddhi is the IQ, the intelligence quotient dimension and ahankar is the EQ, that is the AQ, Ahankar quotient, which means the ego, how much is the dominant dimension in terms of the ego. For example, we see in many different situations that many decisions are made not only in the corporate world, but also in the politics and the polit 
political field because of the ego. The ego plays such a dominant role and then you end up making wrong decisions because of the ego. And therefore, what is important is how do we combine the man and buddhi, that means the rationality and the intuition together to arrive at the decisions in a proper manner. Now, this also we call it as the wisdom model of decision making. The wisdom model of decision making is based on a combination of the heart and the head integrated together. And we have an equation which we call the wisdom equation which is W is equal to R plus I wisdom is reason plus intuition. So, reason being represented by the intellect or the buddhi and intuition being represented by the, in, by the heart dimension. So, that is the basic model of mind management and therefore, it is important for us to gain self mastery over the man, buddhi and ahankar. If we are able to gain mastery over our man as well as buddhi and as well as ahankar, then this will lead to what we call another level of MBA and that is the mind balancing attitude. So, therefore, when we put these MBA models together, then at the bottom level is what we call master of business administration. Now, that is the MBA standard definition of MBA, but then that MBA we can become very effective provided we understand the dynamics of the man, buddhi and ahankar, the second model of MBA. And then the third model of MBA is that if we are able to exercise mastery over man, buddhi and ahankar, then we move towards the mind balancing attitude. So, this is the idea of the MBA model of decision making. Now, is there an interlinkage between these three models? We have discussed the theory K model of management and leadership. We have discussed the OSHA model of human behavior and we have discussed the MBA model of decision making. Now, what is the interlinkage? Are they interlinked or what is the common thread among all these three things, three models? In order to understand the common linkage, let us put these three models juxtaposing each other, the OSHA model, the MBA model and the XYZ model. Now, in the OSHA model, the A is for the aggression and in the MBA model, A is for ahankar and in the theory K model, the this is there is an equivalence to this in terms of theory X. In the OSHA model, H is for the S and H spiritual and humanistic and that is equivalent, broad equivalence is in terms of the buddhi and the Y theory. And the S and O level in OSHA are broadly equivalent to the man dimension of the MBA model and the theory Z dimension in the theory K model. So, we can see that there is a broad equivalence of these three models and so there is a some kind of interrelationship between these models. Now, the fourth model which we are discussing is the idea of the corporate Rishi model of leadership. How do we understand the idea of corporate Rishi? For this, we have got the four steps model of manager and leadership ideas. At the level 1, you are a manager. At the level 2, you are a leader. At the level 3, you are a thought leader and at the level 4, you are a corporate Rishi. Now, there is a subtle difference between all the four dimensions of uh, management and leadership represented by in this you know ladder model of level 1, level 2, level 3 and level 4. Now, when we talk about corporate Rishi, how do we define the Rishi model? The idea of Rishi here is any, any individual who can re-see the things in new perspective. So, seeing and re-seeing the things in new perspective. For example, if you are in the IT sector, in the IT sector, how do you see and re-see the events and opportunities and threats in new ways and therefore, you design your strategies accordingly and take your organization forward in that direction. So, that is the idea of Rishi. So, Rishi here 
like we in the ancient times also we had in India all the rishis and the munis. Now, these rishis were actually in a way they were seeing the reality in different ways. So, same idea is today applicable in the corporate world and also in other fields of human society. So, the rishi means the ability to re-see the things. So, what is your rishi competence? If your rishi competence is good, that means your ability to see and re-see the things and events and opportunities in new ways, then you will be more successful. So, the idea of corporate rishi in more operational terms in the knowledge economy is in terms of what we call a new concept of CEO. C stands for creative, E for enlightened and O for organic leader. Today, we need these kinds of leaders in almost every field of human activity because we are in a knowledge economy and in a knowledge economy, you need to be creative. So, it is the idea of what we said the man, the man dimension or the heart dimension, the intuition dimension and creativity dimension. These are very important. They have acquired a new focus in the management field. E is enlightened. So, a manager has to be enlightened. He has to be aware of the global trends and he has to be aware of what is happening around him at the micro level, at the macro level and the global level and you know he has to take a more broader perspective, he should have a broader vision. So, the enlightenment dimension is very much required and the third one is the organic leader. Organic means you have the positive relationship with the environment, with the stakeholder and you create more synergy in the within the organization and also with all the stakeholders. So, that is the basic idea of the corporate rishi. A corporate rishi is a new type of CEO who is creative, enlightened and organic. So, these are the basic models of the management and leadership. We, if we see within India, how this idea is now getting a, a new dimension or a new momentum that in the business field from 1950s to 2000, the idea of business Maharajas was very dominant. That was the socialistic era of the, hum, the India's development period and therefore, the phrase which was used for the business leaders was the business Maharajas. But with the advent of the IT sector and thereby its impact on the other sectors. Today, we are seeing a shift from the business Maharajas to corporate rishis. There are a lot of new people, new businessmen and the new CEOs who have emerged from nowhere in the IT sector and many other fields because of the creativity, because of the enlightenment and because of the organic dimensions of their thinking. So, this these are the basic ideas. Another question which we need to ask today is can corporate rishis be produced or they are born? So, in my opinion, the corporate rishis can be produced and they are born in schools and that provide the new vision. So, the B schools which provide new vision, they are the place, those are the places where the corporate rishis are born. And then, they are also produced through the factory of experience. When these people after understanding these new ideas go to the field and experience the reality out there, they develop their re, re see competence and therefore, in my opinion the corporate issues can be produced and therefore, the big challenge before the B schools is that they can focus on the idea of the corporate rishis and train the students in that direction and bring them their level of consciousness to the higher level of consciousness from the animalistic level to the humanistic level to the spiritual level and to the oneness level and use of the theory K model in terms of managing day to day activities and using the man dimension or the intuitive dimension or the, in or the heart dimension along with the head dimension. So, this is the basic idea and this 
if we follow these models, then there are a lot of success stories which we can see in our life and we can see so that some of these models have been unconsciously or consciously used by many great leaders of the corporate world and also in other fields of human society. This can lead us to the success and therefore, I will conclude my talk by giving you uh, my song of success which is titled as the step by step song of success. Now, in this song the success is defined in terms of four key ideas. The first idea is the climbing the mountain. So, when you have to climb the mountain you go step by step. Of course, sometimes you may be lucky that somebody can provide you the helicopter and put take you on the top of the mountain. But I am not talking of those situations, I am talking of the situation where people from the middle class families are trying to rise up in the life and they have to take up the step by step approach. The second idea is going to the moon. Going to the moon means exploring opportunities which not many people have explored before. So, this is a metaphor for innovation. So, you are creative, you are innovative, then you come, come out with a new idea, new perspective and therefore, you are taking a new path. The third idea is taking a quantum jump like the kangaroo. So, once you start working and you know learn the things out there from the field and develop your competencies, then you are ready to take a quantum jump. And the fourth idea is continue your journey. Do not be satisfied by one success, but once you have achieved a success, go for the next success, no, go for the next success. That is the idea which we call Charevati, Charevati. That means continue your journey, continue your journey. So, these are the four ideas in this song and uh, so we, we can, uh, I can give you the song now. Step by step and step by step, step by step and step by step, we climb the mountain step by step, we climb the mountain step by step, step by step and step by step, we go to the moon and take a new step, we go to the moon and take a new step step by step and step by step. We take a quantum jump and take a new step. We take a quantum jump and take a new step. Step by step and step by step. We achieve the success and move ahead. We achieve the success and move ahead. Step by step and step by step step by step and step by step, we move ahead, we move ahead, step by step and step by step, we climb the mountain step by step, step by step and step by step, step by step and step by step. Thank you very much.